Divide and, if possible, simplify. Assume all variables represent positive real numbers. Well, we're dividing by a radical, so I'm already thinking we'll need to rationalize. However, we need to combine this first together. And we have a fourth root on the top and a cube root on the bottom. So no quotient rule. The quotient rule needs to have either both fourth roots or both cube roots, in general the same index in order to combine these. If you do not have the same index and you're multiplying or dividing radicals, you do need to go into rational exponent form or have another way to get to the same index. So in this case, the numerator is a one-fourth power and the denominator is a one-third power. Okay. Now, if we wanted to get to the, the quotient rule as fast as possible, we could just get common denominators in these rational exponents. Now, you can also distribute this and combine the x's together and do this in another way, but I want to demonstrate a different technique here. If I multiply by 3 over 3 on the top and 4 over 4 on the bottom, I make this x cubed y squared to the 3 twelfths power. And on the bottom, I have xy to the 4 twelfths power. Since it's all twelfths powers now, now we can use the quotient rule and write it all as a twelfth root. We couldn't use the quotient rule before because they were different indices, but now they're all twelfth roots. Now what's left inside on the top? We have x cubed, y squared cubed, this 3 cubed. And on the bottom, we have x, y to the fourth power. So let's simplify that. Twelfth root, power to a power we multiply, so that's x to the 9 on top and y to the 6. In the denominator, we have x to the 4 and y to the 4. Now, in order to have this rationalized denominator that we need, we need to either have the correct number of x's and the y's in the denominator or reduce them, which is much nicer here. I'm just going to reduce these out from the numerator, leaving us the twelfth root of x to the fifth y squared. So this is a slightly different way to go about this. Essentially, if you do not have the same index and you're multiplying or dividing, you do need to get two common denominators. With rational exponents, getting to a common denominator can get us back to radicals with the quotient rule. I hope this helps.